planning the conduit run. In the northern hemisphere, it is common for solar to be on the south side of the roof, but exterior electronics such as the outdoor solar inverter should be kept out of direct exposure to the sun and so are commonly mounted on the north, east, or west side of the building, typically along the existing electric meter. My preferred method to achieve an internal cable run involves a high material, but because it takes a direct route through the attic, it turns out to be no more expensive than routing less expensive conduit alongside the exterior of the building, taking a longer path to the point of interconnection. You know, attics are uncomfortable to work in, but so is a hot roof. You know, speed is the issue here. The question becomes, how do you actually land the cables coming off of the solar array in order to make that transition into and through the attic? High quality solar installers are comfortable drilling holes through the roof. The transition is made at the last solar panel in an accessible corner of the array, one that can be identified later via visual inspection. But code allows the transition box to be tucked underneath the solar panel to protect it from weather as well as improve the aesthetic look of the installation. This is a specialized solar rooftop transition box called Solideck, which is small enough for the job. It has integrated flashing to get up underneath the shingles. The cables come out from the attic to both land on this terminal block, meeting up with the solar cables from the roof, which enter through a cable gland. Of course, this is a specialized box, which costs about $100 just for the empty shell. There are inexpensive code compliant ways to make the transition into the roof in a workmanlike fashion. Um, for example, you could get a flashed pipe boot, which can be found at the local hardware store. Electrical conduit could then be stubbed up through the pipe boot for the cable to transition between the roof to the attic. When caveat on trying to make the rooftop transition work elegantly with generic off-the-shelf components is that there is only about four inches of clearance between the roof deck and the very top of the solar panels themselves. Often junction boxes found locally are six inches deep. So if the goal is to hide the transition box underneath the array, by the time one considers the height of the pipe boot and the height of the box, it is easy to be in conflict with the array itself. When using generic off-the-shelf components, I will commonly skip the box on the roof simply by transitioning the cables through the conduit via a cable gland and then landing in a box in the attic, accessible and just underneath the solar array. In short, you can achieve a quality installation with off-the-shelf generic parts, but this too requires knowledge and planning rather than last-minute scrambling. DC conductors, when inside the building, are required by code to be protected by metal conduit. It's confusing as metal conduit is associated with a ground path, but in this case, the metal is not for grounding, but instead for physical protection of the cables inside. A rodent is less likely to chew up a wire if contained in metal conduit. A nail or a screw is less likely to puncture a power cable if the cable is contained inside metal conduit. Um, some installers will select microinverters specifically to avoid this metal conduit requirement, allowing the home run from the rooftop to the point of interconnection be made in AC rated Romex. You know, running metal conduit as a retrofit through an attic can be a difficult task. 
I prefer DC optimizer systems with long circuits, and I will spend more money on balance of system material if it improves installation quality or speed. To enclose my interior DC home run cables in metal from the roof to the inverter on the side of the building through the attic, I use a bundled cable product called MC Cable, which stands for Metal Clad Cable. The conductors are already bundled together in a metal wrapping that encloses them fully. You know, this is expensive stuff. One DC circuit of MC cable uh, will contain two full-sized cables plus an undersized ground, and it costs just under $3 per foot. But costs are kept in check with DC optimizer systems allowing fewer circuits than other kinds of inverter systems. You know, my favorite MC cable has four full-sized cables plus an undersized ground at about 350 per foot, which would give me two circuits total with two positives and two negatives plus a ground. It is expensive, but it can be quickly routed through an attic while meeting the DC metal requirements, making the code-compliant installation go very quickly. The MC cable can be landed on a Solideck box and then run through and out the soffit on the underside of the roof eave on the north side of the building where the inverter is landed. MC cable is only rated for damp rather than wet conditions, which makes sense as the metal wrapping isn't nearly as weather resistant as a complete metal tube such as EMT conduit. Uh, yet the outside of a building is considered a wet condition unless the outdoor area is sheltered, such as a covered parking area, an awning, or a porch. Those would be examples of damp rather than wet environments. So the MC cable transition to the inverter can be accomplished in two ways. It's easiest to pull the MC cable throughout the attic and through the soffit and then land on a junction box. I will then strip off the MC cable wrapping and transition the cables into the EMT conduit through the box before landing on the inverter. Alternately, the transition can be made inside the attic if the permanent office opposes any MC cable outside the building due to its damp rather than wet environmental rating. For this home run, most installers will size the cable to be number 8 or number 10 AWG. I usually go for number 6 AWG MC cable because the MC cable comes with an undersized ground. The minimum ground wire to ground the solar rail up on the roof is number 8, and so I select a larger number 6 MC cable to take advantage of the number eight ground wire that will be included in the MC cable bundle. Otherwise, I would have to run an extra ground separately. Uh, the ground will land in the rooftop transition box before landing on a ground lug on the solar rail, uh, completing the grounding run from the inverter on the side of the building up to the solar array on the roof. The solar inverter is then tied into the building ground. Therefore, the easiest code compliant way to bring two solar circuits from the rooftop down to the inverter is to use a number 6 4 plus undersized ground MC cable or a number 6 2 plus ground where there's only one solar circuit. Uh, the number 6 4 is a two conductor pair that will be used for the positive and negative ends of the two solar circuits. Uh, in other words, a 6-4 plus ground conductor MC cable will cover two solar circuits and a 6-2 plus ground will only cover one solar circuit. Uh, or sometimes I use the 6-2 plus ground as a in-attic jumper between subarray sections on the roof. In addition to providing the grounding cable. You know, MC cable is expensive but it makes the array look real nice and it installs quickly.